International best-selling crime writer Don Winslow is just about done after writing decades of popular novels, more than two dozen, and he's calling it quits. Winslow's City of Dreams is the second book in his epic trilogy about an East Coast crime family. Well, I recently caught up with him to talk about the book and what's next after writing. This is the second novel of the trilogy, Warring Crime Families in Rhode Island. So the word on the street is that's where you're from. Where did you pull inspiration from these books? Just what you saw around you? You know, the inspiration comes from a couple of places. Certainly growing up in Rhode Island during an era when, let's be frank, there was a lot of mob activity and, and the mob was very big in that area back then. So I grew up around that. You know, it was so sort of the stuff of your life. You didn't even think of it as terribly extraordinary. The other inspiration are are the Greek and Roman classics, believe it or not. The, the plot is drawn really? from the Iliad and the Odyssey and the Aeneid and Greek tragic dramas. So what I was trying to do was take that stuff that I grew up with um, and see if I could tell a modern crime story, but using the plots and characters and themes of the ancient classics. I do not think I've ever heard anyone say that they took something that that Homer written and 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 based it on a, on a class and a crime. I think this is so fascinating. Also, kind of a, a unique challenge to yourself, right? Well, yeah, it took me twenty eight years. It was that unique because mm. I I was doing other things, of course, writing other books and films and things. But it it, it took me twenty eight years because it was such a challenge trying to find the the modern equivalents of those ancient events you you can't roll a big wooden horse into the streets of providence in 1988 that doesn't work you know uh who would a, a goddess be in providence rhode island in 1988 i was there i, I ran into very few of them so it, it was you know the challenge was to to try to find you know what are the modern equivalences and could i write a crime saga that would stand alone as a mm -hmm. crime saga, you don't need to know the classics at all, I hope, in order to read this. But at the same time, remaining faithful to those stories. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm hoping there's no sirens we need to escape in uh, in Rhode Island. <laughs> I think there are always sirens waiting to escape in Rhode Island. <laughs> mm. You said that many of your characters, including the main character throughout this trilogy, Danny Ryan, is based off of people you know. How tell me more about how much of your memories and past go into your actual characters? You know, listen, I was not involved with with the mob, nor were my family. You know, we're not connected in that way. Uh, and yet Rhode Island's a very small state, you know, about the size of a Walmart parking lot. Everybody knows everybody. And and so you, you know, you grew up around it. So sure, you know, I knew the Danny Ryans of the world, the protagonist of these novels. I played hockey with them. We served together, went to bars, you know, movies and that kind of stuff together. And so when I started to write Danny, he was no problem. All right. I've known him all my life. I love that you know this person. Like you said, you've known him all your life. These characters are very intimate to you as a writer, are they not? Yeah, they are, you know, and, and I I won't start to write a book until the characters talk to me. Wow. I know that sounds a little crazy and kind of airy-fairy, and I'm not really a, a kind of airy-fairy guy, but mm -hmm. uh, until they start making up their own dialogue and talking to me and they won't leave me alone, I, I won't start writing the novel. You've had your book Savages made into a movie by Oliver mm -hmm. Stone. John Section and Isle 3. I love you guys. Many other options are in the works. When you're writing now, is that something that you think of while you're writing? Does it lead your writing? No? No, no, not at all. Because if I did that, only bad things could happen, right? Yeah. Either I'd write a bad film treatment or I'd write a bad novel. Those are the two choices. I don't want to do either of those. So look, I'm not naive and I don't mean to be disingenuous. Everything I've ever written has been optioned or bought by film or television. So I know that that is likely to happen, but I have to forget about it. Just write the yeah. book and don't think of any of that stuff. And then it'll take care of itself, you know? Smart. Actually, good advice just kind of overall in life, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just to, to focus on what is important in making you happy. 
to kind of go off what you said, not disingenuous at all. I mean, the bottom line is you are one of the most celebrated crime novelists. And yet I understand that when this trilogy is done, you're going to step off. You're retiring from writing. What's next? Correct. Well, this, in fact, this trilogy is done. I've, I've written all three books. Uh, and so the third one is just, you know, on the runway waiting to take off a, a year from now. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's next is is just more of what I've been doing the past, you know, five or six years. Uh, I've spent quite a bit of time on social media commenting on on things that I think are wrong, uh, and and encouraging things that I think are right. My my partner Shane Salerno and I uh, have made some videos which have garnered unbelievably to me over two hundred and fifty million views, and so wow. uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to continue to do that. Uh, I just think we're at a point in this country that's an existential crisis uh, for democracy. I, I think that whatever energies or talents, you know, that I might have, I, I think are better put to that right now.